Hi. Um, hello, and welcome to our final book chat of the month. Yay, we made it, y'all. I am Larissa, the African American Resource Center Coordinator, and all month, y'all have been joining me as I read books by Black women to celebrate their stories in honor of Women's History Month. Um, and so we have finally made it to the end. We're just a couple of days away from April. Where did the year go? already right um but i've had a beautiful time reading all of these books and i'm excited to share with you this last one for the month so i read what we lose by zinzi clemens um i thought just like paul Beatty said that it is transfixing that it was transfixing it's a beautiful novel the cover is beautiful i've chosen most of my books this month, based on the covers, I am a person who will choose a book by its cover. If I think it's pretty, I'll pick it up. Um, so, What We Lose. Transfixing, beautifully done, um, a little bit heartbreaking. I've also been choosing some stuff that's been heartbreaking too, which, um, not on purpose. <laughs> so, um, this book follows a young woman, a young woman named Thandy. Um, and we meet her at the very beginning of the novel. And when we meet her, her mother has just passed away. Um, and so we kind of get this scene um, where her and her father are, are in the kitchen hanging out. And it's, it's very somber, right? Because he's lost his wife, she's lost her mother. And we kind of see this new dynamic that they now have. And then Zinzi Clemens takes us back. So what we learn kind of as we go out throughout this novel is that Thandy's mom is from South Africa. She's from a wealthy family. She is um, a mixed South African woman. Her father is Black American. Um, Thandy tells us a little bit about her mom's experience in South Africa. She talks about kind of her personality, how she's super headstrong. She's got thoughts and feelings and she acts on those thoughts and feelings um, in a way that I think wealthy people are often afforded. Um, and so in South Africa, like I said, her family is really wealthy and Dandy gives us some information about the way that her family navigates apartheid. And so during this time of apartheid, there is violence, there's rampant crime, um, but because of the wealth that that family has, they're a bit shielded from kind of the worst of it. So um, we kind of see from behind gates, right, behind electric gates, what's happening over there. They're not experiencing really what's happening, um, not in a way that's super tangible. So we learn a little bit about that. Um, we also learn very little about Thandy's father. Her father is Black American. Um, it doesn't really tell us if he grew up well off or not. Um, we only know that he meets Thandy's mom when he's doing volunteer work in Botswana. Um, and they get, you know, fall in love, get married, move to America, uh, to Pennsylvania, where Thandy grows up. And there, her father is a professor, her mom is a nurse. So even in America, professors and nurses, maybe not today, <laughs> they don't make as much. But, you know, in the 90s, a professor and a nurse, families at the very least, you know, middle class. And so, you know, living, living life. When Thandi is in college, her mom is diagnosed with cancer. And so she drops out of school to take care of her, to help her dad take care of her mom. Um, and as her mom gets worse and worse, as her body is ravaged by this cancer, um, Danny begins to experience bouts of depression and begins to navigate the world in a way that I imagine anybody who's close to their parent does when they lose that parent. Um, a little bit confused, a little bit lost, suddenly unsure of her place in, in her world, in the world at large. And so this book is a little bit disjointed. It's written in a way where Zinzi Clemens sort of jumps from topic to topic. It works though. <laughs> um, it's hard to explain, but it works. Um, so let me go back. So one of the things that this book, because if I tell you too much of the plot, then it gives it away and I don't want to do that. But I will tell you some things that we pull out. One of the things um, in this book is the feeling of being from two places. So 
Dandy is both African and American. Um, and like we have learned to be true um, for a lot of people who are multiracial or multicultural, there's that feeling of not quite fitting in or not quite being a part of either group. When she's in South Africa, there's always that piece of American that comes and kind of keeps her from being fully African. And then in the same way, right? When she's in America, there's still that piece of herself that keeps her from being fully American because she's not. But I think so often we want to belong. And when we don't, it really messes with us. <laughs> so we, we, we kind of see that. That's one of the things that's super prevalent. Another thing that we see a lot um, is colorism in this book. So Thandie is described as light skin. Her mom, like I said, is mixed. So she's also light um, skin. Her dad, I think, is dark skin. But she's light, lighter. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we often see when we hear about colorism, we hear about it from the perspective of people who are darker skinned, kind of the way that colorism oppresses darker skinned people. Um, but in this book, we kind of hear about the perspective um, of colorism from a light skinned person. And her mom kind of warns her against be trying to befriend darker skinned people in a way that almost feels like her mom thinks that dark skinned women cannot be trusted. Um, Thandie doesn't necessarily agree, but she does find befriending black women and dark skinned women in particular a little bit more difficult because they seem to um, resent, I guess, the attention that she receives based on the color of her skin and um, the grade of her hair. And I cannot, I don't think it talks about her hair so much, um, only that her mom wants her to straighten it, which is right, another conversation. Um, but um, so we do see this this conversation about colorism on the other side. And those are things, both um, her being multiracial and her discussing colorism from her point of view, are things that I really find interesting because I can, appre I can appreciate reading about them because it allows me to understand more um, because I do not have those experiences fully. Both my parents are from Georgia <laughs> um, and I am neither light skin nor dark skin. I'm kind of, well, kind of somewhere in the middle in the, the grand scheme of color palettes. <laughs> Uh, at least in a way that, like, I have not necessarily experienced it on either of those binaries, right? And so, um, I've been, I appreciate just sort of being able to understand a little bit more that dynamic. So, like I said, what I liked about this book is that it reads a little bit disjointed. And I recognize that not everybody's going to like that, okay? I know that, um... It Zinzi Clemens jumps around. So an example is um, in one chapter, she'll go from discussing Thandie's mom's diagnosis. And then the next chapter, she talks about Winnie Nelson, um, Nelson Mandela's first wife. Um, I think it was his first wife. Um, but he, they talk about Winnie Nelson and kind of all of those crimes that she was accused of and, and, um, alleged to have committed during apartheid um, in a way that it doesn't necessarily seem like it goes together, but then there's a conversation about maternity at the end of it, right? So she does this thing where she jumps from issue to chapter to issue, and the chapters are really short, so that's why it seems very jumpy, but it works somehow, and I really liked it. Um <clears throat> So, um, like I said, she tends to put them together, um, and these little vignettes that she throws in does give us more of a layman's insight into South Africa and into the effects of apartheid, which um, I have not I, I have not studied extensively. So, like I know very surface level wise, um, and this is still obviously very surface level, but um, it does kind of give us a clue into it the people who were on the ground were thinking, right? Like not all, not the all powerful folks who were fighting it. Um, not the people who were um, perpetuating it, but the people who were just living. And so I appreciated that in this book. 
I read this book in two days and only because I had other work things to finish <laughs> because otherwise I would have finished it in a day. I do highly recommend it. Um, I, yeah, as you can see, it's short. Um, and I think, like I said, the chapters are pretty short. Like this is a chapter, right? These two pages. So chapters are really short. And so you can kind of go through it. And the more you read, the more you really want to know how Thandie's navigating her mother's death. I'll give you a hint. It's not in the best way possible. <laughs> um, and then even how she has to live in a world where her anchor is gone and how that affects her relationships with her friends, with future partners, with her own child, um, which, you know, comes in later in the book. And I think Zinzi Clemens does a fabulous job of just sharing with us the, the heartbreak that comes with losing a parent. Um, the, the, I don't know the word I'm trying to use, but just the, the trauma and not even just trauma, but the trauma and the the good things that come from learning your your family's history and knowing how what they went through informs how they behave. And then that kind of informs how their children behave. So we see a lot of that, just kind of how these generations feed off of each other. I liked it a lot. And it's a book I definitely recommend. So What We Lose by Zinzi Clemens. Um, and that was my last book of the month, y'all. Um, thank you so much to everybody who watched even just one of these videos. I always appreciate any um, sort of interaction, any sort of engagement. I do this partly for me because I just really love to read and I really like to share stories um, with people. But I also do this in hopes that I'll say I'll give a book to you that changes that like speaks to you. You read it and you're like, you know what? I'm glad I read that book. So I hope that at least one of the books that I read this month does that for you because they did for me. I'm really glad that I read every single book that I read this month. Out of that, I will be back in October. Um, in October on my nuns and for years, I read um, books by black authors in the genres of horror and thriller mystery, things like that, because Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, and I like scary books. So, um, I'll see you all in October. Bye!